Hello, everybody. My name is Chelsea Agbiani, and welcome to a DSI public policy webinar. The topic of this webinar is how a bill becomes a law. As an overview of this webinar, I will be introducing the U.S. government, what Congress does, the House of Representatives, the Senate, and steps of how a bill becomes a law. The main purpose of the government is to establish and enforce laws. Creating laws establishes order and stability to the country. The government creates laws for the well-being of the whole country. In order for the government to prevent one person from having too much power, the government created the three branches, the legislative, executive, and judicial branch. The legislative branch makes the laws. This branch is the main focus of this webinar and it contains Congress. The executive branch carries out the laws. This branch consists of the president, vice president, and cabinet members. The judicial branch established, evaluates the laws. The branch consists of the court system. This includes the Supreme Court and other federal courts. The main difference between the federal and state government are the powers that are given. The federal government has powers that concern the country as an overall. The federal government has resp responsibilities such as overseeing national defense and foreign policy, laws, impeaching officials, revising laws, many more. The state government has responsibilities that concern the individual state. They are responsible for state laws that concern criminal cases, Medicaid, the state laws, personal injury, and workers' compensation. The Congress is part of the legislative branch. The Congress is part of the legislative branch. The members of Congress have many responsibilities, including making laws, declaring war, impeaching and trying federal officials, and improving, approving treaties. The Congress consists of two houses, the House of Representatives in the Senate. A member of Congress is called a legislator. The number of members in the House of Representatives are based off of how large the population is in each state. A member of the House of Representatives are also called representatives. So the country has 435 mem members of the House of Representatives and Indiana has nine members. The representatives have the responsibility to impeach federal officials, electing the president and making laws. To become a representative, an individual must be at least 25 years of age, a US citizen for at least seven years and live in the state that they will represent. Each state in the country has two members of the Senate, so altogether the country has 100 members of the Senate. Members of the Senate are also called senators. The senators have the responsibility to approve or reject presidential nominations, trying impeachments, and making laws. To become a senator, an individual must be at least 30 years of age, a U.S. citizen for at least nine years, and live in the state they will represent. The first step of how a bill becomes a law is drafting a bill. Each bill begins with an idea. There could be a safety concern in a town that someone feels like is, is important to change. For example, seatbelts became a law based off of a vehicle safety concern. If you or someone you know has a concern, you can voice your concerns to your legislator. That legislator from either the House or Senator will research and draft a bill. Do not be afraid to contact your legislator because your concern can be someone else's too. Once the bill is drafted, it will be introduced by the legislator from either the House or the Senate. After it is introduced, 
it will be found online at www.congress.gov. Each bill will be labeled with an S or an HR followed by a number. That just means that the bill was either drafted by an, a senator for S or a House of Representative HR. The bill will then move on to the committee. The committee consists of different senators and representatives. The committee will hold hearings to understand the bill more. If the committee decides not to act on the bill, then the bill will be considered dead. But if the committee does, want to, does decide to act on the bill, it will move on to the subcommittee. The subcommittees will be organized based on how specialized the legislators are on the certain topics such as health. The subcommittees will make changes to the bill and will vote on if the bill goes back to the committee. The committee will then, will then meet and mark up the bill and make any changes that they want. After the changes and amendments are made, the bill will move to the floor, which is the full chamber. The bill will then be moved to the full chamber. There will be more debate and the members will vote on approving the amendments. The bill will pass to the next chamber or not based on the members' votes. Once the bill passes the House or the Senate's chamber, it will move on to the other chamber and be voted on before getting passed to the president. So if the House created the bill and is passed by their chamber, then that bill cannot be changed and will move from the House chamber to the Senate chamber to be voted on if it wants to be passed also, and vice versa. Once both chambers approve the bill, it will be moved on to the president for final approval. Once the bill is voted on to pass by both houses, the president will have the final say in if the bill becomes a law. If the president approves, the bill becomes a law. If the president does not act within 10 days, then the bill will become a law. If the president opposes a bill, it, it will be vetoed. And that veto can be overridden. Members of Congress can override a veto bill if two thirds of both houses vote on passing the bill. After both houses vote on the bill and two thirds pass for it to, for the, bill become, for the bill to become a law, then it will become a law. So if you have a strong concern, then do not be afraid to talk to your legislator. They're there to hear you and make sure your voices are heard. So speak your voice and you can make a strong impact. Thank you for your time. And for more information, please email dsindiana.org. Thank you.